Hello, hello. Welcome to Romi Gelsware. I hope you guys are doing absolutely great. So guys, I am in Kerala yet again and this is my third visit. I am super excited and I am starting my journey from the Queen of Arabian Sea, Kochi. Honestly, I was so impressed with how compact yet well organized Kochi is. The streets of the city exude lively energy in the day and becomes vibrant with colors as the sun goes down. We started our day in Kochi with a traditional Kerala style breakfast at Shri Muruga Cafe and we could truly indulge ourselves in Keralan culture at this place. So we have ordered uh, traditional breakfast here. This is uh, payam, the fried banana, and this is beef curry, and uh, this is puttu, and uh, it's served with black chana. I'm gonna indulge in this and let you know how it is. First place that we are going to visit is Chinese fishing net for which Kochi is very very well known for and we are here to see this old 600 to 700 year old technique how the fish were caught with this Chinese fishing net let's go we explored Chinese fishing nets while exploring the Fort Kochi area which is the heart of Kochi <laughs> And then we got to know some interesting facts about Chinese fishing nets from the local fishermen. This one actually this called is Chinese fishing net. But why telling the Chinese fishing net? This introducing from China. That man name is Mr. Kublai Khan. He's Mongolian. That is the old name is telling the Chinese fishing net. So, the net only China. This is designing, technology, construction, the development is complete. Portuguese technology is also. It is 14, 700 years old. So you catch fish in uh, July, August, September? That time is a better fishing. Better fish. And this time you this don't catch very fish? Less. Very less. You can see complete net stop the work. And uh, how many fish you catch every day? From no. uh, 4 to 10 mm, in the morning? It's like tea. If you some get... 10 fish, sometimes empty. So like tea. It's completely empty also sometimes? Oh, yes. So you saying this was introduced by Chinese, but the system was smaller. Yeah. Portuguese made it Big bigger. Ah, that time, uh, for in Chinese people's making the bamboo stick. Okay. Portuguese making the big uh, teak wood. Teak wood. You will find hundreds of varieties of fish in the vicinity. The best part is the fish here is freshly caught and the locals come here to buy fish because of its reasonable price. So once you have seen the Chinese fishing net, uh, walk down this small lane. It is a small market. You will get little trinkets and souvenirs like fridge magnets. I really liked and watched few. Uh, these behind me are the boilers of a ship, so this is sort of a landmark. Fort Kochi acquainted us with an unlikely blend of medieval Portugal, Holland and an English village. Every nook and corner of Kochi exudes an old world charm and has a story to tell. So we have now come to see the oldest church in Cochin, San Francis Church.
St. Francis Church was built by the Portuguese and it's believed to be India's oldest church. It used to be a beautiful wooden chapel and was later altered by both the Dutch and British. It reflects ancient Indo-European architecture with a wooden roof and stone flooring. The legendary Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama was buried in the St. Francis Church. Even though his remains were later taken to Portugal, the church still has his burial spot. Walking down the lanes of Kochi is an experience in itself. Every street you go has something to offer like restaurants, hotels, boutique hotels, old Portuguese, Dutch houses and the streets are very colourful. You must walk a lot to see all of this. So we have now come to Jew town. It's another place in the neighborhood of Fort Kochi and it's a significant place which you must see. Jew town used to be a thriving community of Jews once upon a time but it has now converted into a market. It has a lot of cultural significance. Just explore this whole street, so vibrant, bustling, hustling, and absolutely love, absolutely love. Yes. synagogue. A uh, synagogue is a place where Jewish people, uh, you know, assemble to pray. It's sort of their temple and uh, this is one of the seven synagogues in Cochin which is still active. So let's get inside. Pardesi Synagogue is one of the most highly recommended places to visit in Kochi and I can certainly vouch for that as I saw something that I never experienced before. I loved how magnificently it was illuminated by Belgian chandeliers and coloured glass lamps. It was built for the thriving community of Jews back in the days uh, when they were uh, being persecuted in Europe. So those Jews, they came to Kochi and took shelter in this neighborhood and that's why this synagogue was built. Right in the middle of the synagogue, you'll witness an ornate brass bima, which is a raised platform where Torah is read. Jew Town is also famous for its art cafes, especially the classic art cafe where you can admire beautiful art pieces by local artists while enjoying the food. So we are going to Mocha Art Cafe. It's one of the famous cafes here in Jew Town.
Mocha Art Cafe is right in front of the Pardesi Synagogue. If possible, try not to miss this place because I fell in love with the artistic and exuberant vibe of this place. Not only the aesthetics are great and the food is delicious, but you will also love the view of the old-fashioned street from its cute little balcony. We are going to enter uh, Ginger House, another beautiful cafe in the neighborhood. So after you have explored the town, you can come here, chill by the seaside and enjoy the good food. This looks like a Christmas special decoration. Look at the tree that they have made. I'm absolutely loving the vibe of this place. So much art to appreciate. Sit by the seaside, enjoy the food. Good wind is blowing here. So it's a bit of relief from the heat. Are you enjoying this place? Loving the place. The waterfront view, chilled beer. Yeah. What else do you need? This restaurant is a unique restaurant in which where you can also eat a very delicious food as well as you can buy everything and anything you see over here. So even the pillars, the doors, everything you see is for sale. Even the tables and chairs which you are using for sitting in the restaurant, it's also for sale. So do visit us. It's one of the iconic places and a museum restaurant for all. So just close to the Jew town, there is this Martinchiri Palace which is also called the Dutch Palace. Martinchiri Palace was built by the Portuguese and uh, it's also called Dutch Palace. Confused? Yeah, even I got confused. The palace was built by the Portuguese and gifted to the king of Kochi but it later went into the hands of the Dutch and then it, was, it went under major repairs and renovations. That's why it's also called the Dutch Palace. What I really like about this palace is uh, it's built in a very mixed architecture. Uh, you'll find typical Kerala style of architecture here, a bit of Portuguese touch and a bit of Dutch touch in there. Best of all three worlds. <laughs> We couldn't film the palace because filming is not allowed but do pay a visit here if you want to learn about the history and culture of Kerala. So we are ending our day at Kathakali Art Centre. It's 5 in the evening. It's a perfect time to you know watch Kathakali dance, the traditional dance. So yeah, let's get inside. There are lesser Indians and more foreigners. I think they are more interested in watching the classic uh, Indian traditions. Honestly, quite keen to watch the whole makeup and preparation session that goes into performing Kathakali. Watching the seasoned artists creatively dolling up their faces with natural colors was quite an experience in itself. Another interesting thing about Kathakali is both the male and female characters are played by men. Kerala's traditional and an ancient dance form, its dramatic and unique storytelling style leaves you spellbound.
they handed the script of the story to us before the performance so that we can understand the tale while watching the story being narrated through expressions and gestures <laughs> Um, it was very exciting. Um, they prepared the story beforehand, so you knew what's happening. Because otherwise, I wouldn't understand. You definitely see it. It's very good. They're incredible artists. Very expressive, and the makeup was uh, was amazing. The making of was uh, incredible. So I really like it. And the voices of the guy was uh, so to sing one hour like this. It's unbelievable. I impressive. <laughs> We also watched Kalari, the traditional martial art of Kerala. The experience was quite exhilarating. During the performance, you might flinch every now and then as it seems like swords and knives will slip off and hit you, but they don't as the performers are quite experienced. We are running the last 28 years. Indian culture should be keep alive. 365 days. This kind of uh, chemistry and science of the art. So it's uh, not for the money, not for the things. It's, uh, keep the art and culture alive. So we need the futurely to support of the people. So kindly please help and support the art and come to enjoy. of the evening we spent time getting lost in the Christmas vibe of the city. If possible, next time plan your Christmas or New Year in this beautiful, lively and less crowded city. I enjoyed the festive vibe of Kochi to its fullest without having to deal with the festive crowd. While we were absorbing the vibe of the city, we paid a visit to the most famous Kashi Art Cafe in Fort Kochi. I actually absolutely love the vibe of this cafe. It's so early and artsy and uh, along with having the great food, they have a great ambience. It's sort of an art gallery come cafe. So you can uh, come appreciate the art here and uh, enjoy the good vibe music. Uh, They've got good sizzlers, burgers, soups, beef, fish, chicken sizzlers are good. You can try it. Another cafe which I would recommend is Kissa Cafe, and the whole place came alive with live jamming by the locals. But we decided to have our Christmas Eve dinner at some place quiet. Pandal Cafe is another peaceful place to dine in Kochi. They have some healthy food options and the soothing ambience is what you want at the end of the day. So thanks for watching this video till the end. I hope you have liked it. And if you have liked it, please like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.